how-to stage. Greet a man whom I really like with genuine enthusiasm and Percy whom I already don't like with false excitement. A man is smart and knows the Oakland Hills like the back of his hand. He lives higher up than I do where the fire was. He also He's also Greek, tall, good looking, happily married, 20 years and counting, two kids still in college, one on Wall Street, a winter home in Tahoe he's already offered to let me use this winter for free. After the appraisal, which was lower than expected, he made it cl he made it clear that it's not just my home, it's all of them, including his. Percy, on the other hand, is irritating. I can tell he doesn't like me, and I wonder if it's because he's not used to dealing with people who have taste. And in my case, a black person, or because I'm tall and he's short. Even with those loafers, he's about 5'6". I'm 5'8". He should think stripes instead of plaid, and those dockers could stand to be hemmed. His blonde hair looks like it's so full of gel that a tornado wouldn't move a strand. His big Burberry notepad is pressed against his chest. So, he says after he walks in like a CSI tech, are we ready to take a walk and let me share some of my ideas, which I would like to make clear to you once again, Georgia, you can reject any of it if you so choose. Sure. Super. I like to start in the upstairs bedroom and work my way down if you don't mind. I don't mind. I follow the two of them up and down the three flights and get a kick watching Percy act as if he's on a game show. He likes the point. So, I see your lovely ethic pieces are still hanging, and I don't see any of the blue tape I left to indicate which ones you would in mind storing. Of course, I know you're a busy person. Oh, it's on my list of things to do this weekend, Percy. But tell me, seriously, is this so a potential buyer won't think someone black lives here? Good point. Absolutely not. We just want to think neutral and avoid, and avoid themes with any cultural implications because you want a potential buyer to fall in love with the home, not be impressed by your artwork or decorative skills. Really? I can tell that a man isn't buying this bullshit, but he knows Percy good at staging. As I said before, Personally, I love your taste, but I'm not the one trying to buy your home. And although your decor is interesting and the kaleidoscope of colors is lovely, right now, it feels more like a concert. And if you want to sell quickly, we have to aim for a waltz. Kaleidoscope? And how do I waltz? Well... Chances are about three quarters of the living room furniture will most likely have to go. Go where? Into storage. And replace it with what? Rental furniture. We use reputable establishments that specialize in staging. Everything from the top of the line bedding to sofa and lighting, plants, and even artwork. I want to say no shit, but instead I just say, I understand but can you at least give me more of a sense of what else you think I might need to do? And this is when Percy becomes more orgasmic. Well, we'll need to dismantle all of the thematic rooms and make them more serene. We'll get rid of all clutter, especially knickknacks, as I said before, and replace them with beautiful orchids wherever possible. The dining room needs a more traditional look not artsy like what you now have. We'll group the rental furniture so that it's more musical. We'll shower the place with lighting, incandescence. I've noticed a few, a few cracked window panes, broken doorknobs, and things of that nature. All of these items will need to be repaired. We'll probably have to hire painters and definitely change some of the bright carpeting. And the hardwood floors would do well to be refinished. I'm just giving you a general overview, but I'm sure I've missed a few minor details, but not to worry. 
wait, I forgot to mention plants. Giant arcea palms and fiscues can do wonders for any room. What's wrong with the plants in here? Some of them don't look healthy as I like them to. And if you're having problems caring for them, I can also bring in artificial ones, which I don't recommend, or I'm sure the nursery, nursery we use would be happy to give you watering tips. About how much will all this cost me? I haven't got into the outside yet, but suffice it to say that curb appeal is crucial because it's the first thing a potential buyer sees. We'll probably need to hire a landscape architect to spruce up the flower garden and around the entire pool area. That should about do it. So again, how much and how long will all this take? Staging isn't cheap, Georgia, if done right. But think of it as an investment you'll recoup when you see how quickly your house sells and how close to the asking price you'll probably get. I'm estimating somewhere between ten to 15000 You're kidding. He nods as if he's afraid of me now. And how long will it take? Again, it all depends on how much you let us do. Everything you just mentioned. Um, anywhere from two to three weeks, probably there are no, providing there are no delays, which almost always happens. But how am I supposed to live in here when all this is going on? Or is that a dumb question? Well, Percy says, do you have a vacation home? I would so like to slap him. No. Well, with a staging of this magnitude, most of my clients either rent a temporary apartment, check into a hotel suite, or take a vacation. Oh, fuck you, Percy. <laughs> Are you thinking about where do you like to live, he asks. I'm beginning to wonder if A-Man is even at this party. I'm not sure. Ideally, I love to live in New York, but it's far too expensive. Who needs winter? Percy says. I'm tired of California, I say, just to piss him off. Everything a person could ever need is in California. That's not true, Percy. Look, I'm going to have to bid you adieu. As I'm running late for my next appointment, I'll do my best to email you the details breakdown for the next week as it takes time to figure all this out, and then you can let Amen know just how much you're up for. Fair enough. Fair. Have a nice afternoon, and thank you, Percy. Amen walks out behind him, but stops on the top steps, and you're absolutely certain you want to tell, sell, Georgia? I'm positive, Amen. I told you, it's too much house for one person. But what if you remarry? I look at him like he just asked a ridiculous question. Don't ever give up on love, Georgia. Keep the faith. He sounds like a talk show host, but I know he's being sincere. So, oops, excuse me. I just say, I have tons of faith. Mom, we're here. Oh, hell. I'm in my closet sweating, naked, and frustrated from not having found anything I would want to be seen in yet another cerebral party that Wanda has talked me into going, into going to tonight. When I hear the sounds of little hooves galloping into my bedroom, before I have a chance to put my robe on, I feel four eyes on me and there, staring the day away, are two brown midgets in shock. <laughs> this is what you both going to look like one day. I say while slithering into my terry cloth robe and try, tying the sash tight, but not if you exercise and use cocoa butter on your stretch marks. Both of them started twirling their two thick braids. What are stretch marks? The one in the pink and white polka dot leggings and pink t-shirt acts. They are marks that stretch, Scarlet, Gabby says with authority. She dressed... She's dressed to kill in orange leggings and an orange and white striped t-shirt. She looks quite pleased with herself and punctuates her, her pronouncement by putting her hands 
on her non-existent hips. Scarlet looks as if she's always believes her sister. Can, can Granny get a group hug? I ask. They run into me and pull on my robe and squeeze. Hi, we love you, Granny. They, sense, they say simultaneously. Hi there, girls. Granny love you too. Now let's go find your mom. I say, gently pushing them out of the closet, but when I try to take them by the hand, they shake loose and charge down the hallway, little female puppies. Estelle is standing there in one of the two Lululemon outfits I gave her for her birthday last year. This one happened to be lemon and black. She used to be a real yoga fanatic, but I don't, don't think she goes much anymore. She's also as pretty as I always wanted to be. Looks more like Michael, the mistake I married right after grad school. I give her, or should I say we give her, another group hug. I kiss her on both cheeks and her forehead. You look good, Stell, I say, lying through my teeth. She looks tired, thinner than I've ever seen her since college, stressed. She's one of these educated, new age, stay at home super moms who does everything, including working at home as a technical writer for Apple. She must do it in her sleep because the girls are rarely out of her and just in sight, sight line. They do all the things that television shows and books have told them to do to qualify as good parents. They didn't even trust daycare. I'm surprised they trust me. Of course there was traffic and I've only got 15 minutes before my salt scrub. Thank you so much, mom. How are you? I'm fine, baby. Remember this house the way it looks now because it's being staged and in about a month or so, it'll look like someone else lives here. So you're actually going to do it. I am. How are you? Excellent. Just, just thinking on going back to work but I'll tell you more about that later. Girls, be nice to your granny and do what she tells you. Do we have an agreement? They nod. She hands me a bulging backpack, lunch, snacks, books, and DVDs. I should be back by six if that's okay. And thank you so much for this. Okay, stop, go relax. We go through this every single time. Now beat it. Yes, mom, just beat it. Gabby and Orange says that she chases after Scarlet and Pink, both of whom are heading to my off-limits office. I tiptoe down and see them looking through my mother's scrapbook, and I lean against the door and just watch them. What's this? Scarlet asks, trying to see through the yellowing plastic. It's a picture book, Gabby says before I do. I believe I can now tell them apart. Gabby is the bossy one. Scarlet seems to re rely on her for answers, and Lord, does she always have one. It's called a scrapbook, I say, and set it on my desk so they can see who's in it. Who are all these old people, Scarlet asks. Relatives. Where are they? Dead. All of them? That's impossible, Gabby says. Well, most of them. Have you, have you two ever heard of slavery? I think we have, Gabby says. It's when black people had to work for white people and did not get a paycheck. <laughs> That's one way to put it. <laughs> Which was silly because you always need a paycheck, Gabby says. She once again puts her hand on her bony hips and then turns her palms up and say, how were they supposed to pay their bills? And hunches her shoulders especially their American Express, Scarlet says. Daddy is always worried about that one. I'm just glad we don't have to be slaves and that mom and daddy and you aren't granny. Aren't you glad, granny? Gabby, of course. Yes. Why are all the, the pictures off the wall? Miss Gabby asks, definitely living up to her nickname. Yeah, what happened to us? Scarlet asks. Granny might be moving soon, so I had to put all the pictures in a safe place until I find a new home for them. Are you getting forked too? Scarlet asks. What do you mean forked? 
we have the sign we have a sign in our front yard that says fork on it she informed me no it doesn't scarlet it has an s and an e but we don't know how to say it i cover my mouth where's your sign one of them asks i don't care right now which one it is granny doesn't have one yet but my house isn't getting fork Want to know another secret, Scarlet asks. We're moving too, Gabby yells. You are? Yes, indeed, she says. We're moving into someplace cheap because Daddy mm. can't keep paying for the whole house. <clears throat> which do we, which we do not need anyway, <clears throat> excuse me, says Gabby. And Mommy said when she finds a real job, we'll get to go to a real school. We want to go to a real school, don't we, Gabby? She nods. Can you keep a secret, Granny? Scarlet asks. Absolutely, I say, thinking that apparently so can my daughter. Good, because we're not supposed to talk about this and we don't want to get in trouble. I won't tell. Good. Now, what are we going to do for fun, Gabby asks. Would you like to go for a walk? Walk where, Gabby asks. Up the hill, I say, pointing out the window. Not interested, Gabby says. How about down the hill? Okay, Scarlet says. So I change back into my sweats. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I change back into my sweats and sneakers and we walk down the hill. But of course we have to walk back up, which almost kills me. Afterward, we don't open that backpack we don't open that backpack Estelle sent. I let them eat forbidden snacks, unnatural cookies and potato chips. But when they see the Red Bull in the fridge, I draw the line. We watch two long cartoon DVDs and they take turns reading me those silly but fun children books I once loved. And of course I'm impressed with how well they can read. And I applaud and applaud and then I take them to In-N-Out Burger if they promise not to say they had that instead of the hummus and celery and the orange homemade soup that Estelle packed for them. Some people take all that healthy stuff entirely too far and then one day you'll get cancer and die anyway. We play hide and seek, but it's a bitch trying to find the two of them. And when it's finally four o'clock, I ask, do you guys ever take naps? <laughs> They look at their little digital pink and orange watches. Is it Saturday, Scarlet asks. I nod. Not on Saturdays, Gabby says. But aren't you girls tired? What a stupid ass question. Wait, I made a mistake. It's Friday. They run and sit back on the sofa looking bored. Excuse me. Waiting for the next act activity. I turn on the television. Have you two ever watched Judge Judy? They shake their heads no. I turn to her show. You'll like her, she's funny. They sit through two shows without moving an inch. They are mesmerized and probably too confused to ask me what a past due notice is or a loan or a scam or why the people are fighting over a 10 week old puppy. Judge Judy is mean, Scarlett says when it's over. What is a judge, asks Gabby. Is she like a preacher? And what is insurance, Gab, Granny? I tell them I don't know what insurance is, but it's something I'm sure I should probably get. And on and on till I finally hear that door open and they jump up and run into their mother's arm like they haven't seen her in years. And I hug my daughter tight for trying to put on such a good front. I don't know what to say to her right now. And even though she looks refreshed, her brown cheeks are glowing. I can tell she's already thinking about tomorrow, next week, or next month. She uses rush hour as an excuse to head home, says thank you, and the girls give me a hug without being told, which means I may have finally scored some more granny, some maybe granny is nice, nice after all points. Estelle kisses me on the cheek and say she'll talk to me soon, and I hug her again even harder this time and say, let's make it sooner. When I hear the phone ringing, I'm lying on the sofa in the family room, my mouth wet from drooling. 
it's dark outside and the clock on the wall says it's a quarter past eight. Shit, it's Wanda. I spring up and start running toward my bedroom. I'm great. I'm getting dressed right now. Be there in an hour. Are you all right, girl? I'm fine. Those twins wore me out. After they left, I decided to close my eyes for a few minutes. Well, don't bother getting dressed. I'm on my way home. These folks must have all popped Xanax or something. No one even laughed. It was boring, with one exception. What's that supposed to mean? Well, they say you can talk a, talk a person up. You are not talking, telling me Michael was there. I kid you not. He was with some cute Asian chick who looked like one of her parents must be black, but she was also young enough to be his daughter. He always liked them young and Asian, so what else is new? Wait a minute, is this some kind of setup, Wanda? Don't be ridiculous. He just moved back to the Bay Area. I'm thrilled. And? And what? So how he look? Well, you know, he's always had different tastes. We've always had different tastes in men. I mean, did he look healthy? Violet thought he looked old. She was talking his ear off when I left. Did he ask about me? Of course he did. And what did you tell him? That you're alive and thriving? Was he wearing a wedding ring? No. Figures. He did give me his card and ask me for your number. You didn't give it to him, I hope. Of course I did. And he's going to call you and you're going to talk to him. I slid down the wall to the floor. I have nothing to say to Michael. Georgia, this was part of your plan. So look at it. So look at this as divine intervention and try not to be a bitch when he calls. She laughs. I try to laugh too, but I can't. Okay, that's the end of this chapter. I wonder what is it about Michael that she is so angry about? Because all the other dudes kind of did her dirty. What did Michael do? He was the last husband. So what did Michael do that she's so mad at? Hmm. Hopefully they touch on that. Um, in the, the chapters to follow. But that's the end of this chapter. I'll see you in the next chapter. Bye.